So in this video, I want to talk about jaundice. So jaundice means you have too much bilirubin, and the patient normally presents with a yellowish skin and or sclera. So now the patient could be either have too much unconjugated bilirubin or too much conjugated bilirubin. So let's start talking about the unconjugated bilirubin. So if the patient has too much unconjugated bilirubin, the bilirubin never made it to its conjugated form. So the problem lies within or before the conjugation process. So what could be the reason? Well, first of all, you could have too much breakdown of red blood cells, so hemolysis, and you end up with tons of unconjugated bilirubin. Or there's a problem with this OATP2 transporter, so you could not take up the unconjugated bilirubin. Or there's a problem in the conjugation process by itself, a problem with UGT. So now you can have also conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. What does that now mean? That means the bilirubin got conjugated, but now there is a problem. So either it didn't get into the canaliculi, so you have a problem with MRP2 and gets back right out again, or there's a gallstone, there's a blockade. So it gets here, the bilirubin, but then cannot get further, cannot be released in the duodenum, and gets pumped back right out again. So these are the most common causes, in particular the gallstones, for conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So now just to summarize, if you have hyperbilirubinemia, you have to first figure out, does it come from too much unconjugated or too much conjugated bilirubin? If it is unconjugated, it needs to be before you have the conjugated form of bilirubin. If you have conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, it needs to happen afterwards, some defect afterwards. Certainly, also, you can have both unconjugated and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And that's most common if you have just some sort of general liver damage. If you have liver damage and rip apart the hepatocytes, you're going to get both, too much unconjugated and too much conjugated bilirubin. So now let's talk about a couple of specific causes that would lead to unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. We said we can have too much breakdown of red blood cells, there will be hemolysis, we could have a problem with this tr uptake, the OATP2 transporter, or we have a problem with UGT. And that's fairly common. So first of all, if you see it in a newborn, it might be just a developmental delay in UGT, which peaks around day three. But there's also a more severe form, the Kriegler-Nahar syndrome. This is a complete absence in UGT and could also lead to, for example, kernicterus, which just means you have bilirubin in the basal ganglia. Or there's also a fairly common syndrome, that's the Gilbert syndrome, which is about a 30% decrease in UGT activity. So if you are talking about diseases related to conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, gallstones are fairly common. And then if you have a defect in MRP2 that's very rare, that's called the Dubin-Johnson syndrome. I just want to finish up with reminding you that the conjugated bilirubin can show up in the urine. So if you are talking about conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, we have too much bilirubin in the urine. Whereas when we are talking about unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, remember the unconjugated one can never show up in the urine. So if you do not have bilirubin in the urine and you have hyperbilirubinemia, it's probably due to these causes. This concludes the video on jaundice.